So that is a dish of soap and water. And if I take a ring and I made this out of a bit of spare filament that I glued together, dip it in, we get a soap film that we can make a bubble with. And of course, big whoop, we've been doing that since we were kids. But what about if I take two of them? If I take two of them, pop them in one on top of the other, lift it out gently, and then part them, what happens? is I get this kind of convex shape. Now there's a hole in the middle there, the two aren't joined, and this is called a gyroid. Now that was kind of surprising because what you would expect is there would be a cylinder soap bubble joining those two rings together. Instead you get this weird gyroid shape. Now it turns out that that gyroid shape is formed because it's actually the minimum amount of material needed to join those two rings. And in fact, a cylinder uses more material, so it naturally falls into this gyroid shape to use the minimum amount of material. And that's really kind of interesting because what would you get if you had a load of them side by side, that way, that way, and that way, to form a block of these minimum materials? Well, what you get is this, and it's called a gyroid lattice. And it turns out that in nature, it will automatically form, and we've been seeing these all of the time without really realising it. You find them in butterflies' wings, bird feathers, crystal structures, and even the eyes of some animals, because they have amazing properties. The mathematics of it was discovered by uh, Alan Schoen in the 1970s and since then they become incredibly popular. Now, if you happen to have Cura, to make a gyroid lattice is incredibly easy. So to make a gyroid lattice with Cura, open Cura, stick a block in there, and then go here, click down, and if you look, you'll see you've got infill pattern, and it's a grid, and it's set of 15% density. If I click that down arrow, there is gyroid. So click on gyroid and you can change the infill density to actually change the size of your gyroid. There's also something else you need to do. If you go to the shell, you'll see that the worn line count is 2, set that to 0. And the same with the top thickness and the bottom thickness, just set them to 0. Then when you've done that, hit slice and it will auto-generate your gyroid for you. Click on preview and you'll see we've formed ourselves a gyroid. Incidentally, it's also available in bamboo. If you go to bamboo, look at strength, and then go to the infill, sparse infill, and you see it set at grid. If I click on that, there it is. There's the gyroid pattern. Once we've done that, of course, we can print it. And when you print it, that's what you get. Now, apart from being beautiful in itself, it has three astounding properties. The first one is, well, it's support in itself, and so it doesn't need supports, which is great, because you, how would you get into those channels to clean them out otherwise? The next one is that it doesn't have a weak axis. You can press them that way, that way, or that way. It makes no difference. It's as strong in every single direction. And the third one is, when you look at it, it looks like it's all one channel going through the block, but it isn't. What it does is separates it into two channels that are intimately intermingled, so you can put fluids through there without them actually mixing, but with them being as, plo as close as they possibly can. And that one has got lots of interest, especially in this. It's a heat exchanger designed by Advanced Engineering Solutions, and it's about half the size of current heat exchangers, uh, said to be four times more efficient, and is destined for helicopters. Now, it is a beautiful design, and if it lives up to its promise, what an awesome advancement. But when you look at something like that, then the other uses of it, I would say, would be really quite obvious, and that would be in things like flow batteries, or maybe the zinc bromide battery that we came up with in previous videos. So having those channels like that that we can 3D print, and in fact it's the only way of creating channels like that, to improve the efficiency of things like batteries is extremely interesting. 
And it doesn't stop there. Look at these channels. Instead of thinking of these channels as channels, we think about them as a network. Now we can create that network by making this block a hole, merging it with another block, intersecting them, and we'll get a network. And then again, of course, we can print it. And like the other one, we can print it without any supports. Actually, what we get is a dual network shown by the red and the blue. And these two networks are intimately intermingled, but at no point do they touch. And this is how crystals form when they form from different materials. And when it comes out, it is in fact much easier to see that it is in fact two lattices as they move side by side. So what would you use something like this for? Well, you could do what in Tesco did and metal plated and make it electrodes of a hydrogen generation system where you got improved generation. He actually had um, problems with it because of the metal that he used, but it could be used like that. Or again, you could use it as the electrodes for batteries because they interpenetrate so well. Now, of course, I've made these quite large so we can actually see them, but they could be made very, very small indeed, and that would improve the energy density of a standard battery, as well as the hydrogen generation for a generation unit. So that would be really useful for something like that. This one, as I said, could be used quite well for a flow battery. So we've got these kind of uh, gyroid lattices that have potential to be used in the application of energy generation and storage, which I thought was super interesting. Now, they're plastic representations, so we could do better if we made them in metal, certainly, but there are companies that would produce something like that for you once you give them their design, or you could copper plate it or electro plate it in the metal of your choice. I thought they were absolutely fascinating things with a ton of possibilities, and if you haven't heard about them, you should certainly look into them because of their immense usefulness in potential. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.